Cops hate to hear that stuff when all the stories don't jive. Who rolled the stone back? One says an angel, one somebody else says something else. What did they see when they got to the tube? Those stories all do not jive. Two angels. We can't trust the eyewitnesses kind of. They don't even agree with each other. In the Bible, the inerrant word, word of God. That's a big problem. So, we had a report. There was an execution on Friday. Sunday, witnesses, some number of witnesses show up. They agree the body is missing. Maybe it looks something like that. Let's present our theories. Theory number one, their theory. Son of God died with all the human sins, allowed himself to be crucified so he could join his Father in heaven. Theory number one. Theory number two. Somebody stole a body. Isn't that the obvious choice? I, I don't, the, the Christians don't see it that way. We look at that and say, somebody stole the body. <clears throat> okay, transubstantiation. Turns water to wine at the wedding in Cana. And this, as I said, applies to the communion wafer and wine and Catholicism. Uh, at, at Cana, uh, Jesus says to his mother, Woman, what am I to do with thee? My hour has not yet come. Not a nice thing to say to your mother. Six water vials were converted into good wine. His first miracle was helping people get tanked. Well. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was a representation of that. His mother's yelling. His mother kind of yelled at him a little bit, just so he wouldn't help his people out a little bit. Uh, what are you going to do with the story? There's no way to confirm this, although what you would like to see, what I would like to see, in a story like this, is was it retold anywhere? I mean, when magnificent things like this happen with big crowds of people, like the plagues in Egypt, like the sun standing still, remember that story? When darkness and earthquakes happened during the crucifixion, you think someone might have made note of that somewhere else in the world? Darkness befell the whole world in the middle of the day. And no one else talks about this ever. I'd be unhappy about that if I was a Christian. World shaking events should be corroborated by people who don't have a definite interest in the story. And they weren't. These stories appear nowhere else. Josephus, very suspect. Okay, now let's talk about the communion homes here. This one I like a little bit more because it's testable. It's disgusting. It's testable. <laughs> Literally turned into flesh and blood. So you go out and buy yourself a stomach pump. And you snake it down someone's throat. So you give them communion. You go through the whole thing. Pop it down the throat. Then you snake the tube down. And you pull the stuff out. And then you do DNA analysis. And you should see blood and human flesh inside the person's stomach. If you're a Catholic, that's what you would expect to see. So it is testable. <laughs> Sickening, but testable. Um, but there are other transubstantiation claims that we see today, which are, uh, in the scientific community, roundly ridiculed, but are still out there because there's money to be made. How to convert your car to use water as fuel? Turn lead into gold. Those are the two, the old famous ones. Um, Transubstantiation claims have a couple of similar uh, qualities. They, uh, there's usually some conspiracy, like they don't want you to know that you can run your car on, on water. Mobile and Exxon, they don't want you to know the secret, but I know it. Give me $20. Get rich quick. Lots of testimonials. I saw this happen. I was amazed. Uh, we see that with the uh, um, power balance bracelets. These bracelets that the athletes wear, right? Just testimonials. No tests, just testimonials. 
which appeals to confirmation bias, especially if this is about to make you into a millionaire, damn right you want to believe this is going to work. Real miracle. Why don't we do something good with this power? Okay, last one. Mediumship, talking to spirits, angels, ghosts. Now, these, I know people have these experiences, and I don't mean to uh, deny them their experiences. The experiences are real for the person. The question is, are you experiencing contact with another world, or are you experiencing something else? What are the circumstances? We always ask them. This is important. What time of day is it? First question. Are you in bed when this happened? What is your state of mind? Are you drunk? Are you excited? Are you sad? Are you tired? What is your state of body? Are you freezing cold? Are you super fatigued? Are you sweltering hot? Is some other weird stress happening on your body? Because that will affect your perceptions. It absolutely will affect your perceptions. What's in your bloodstream? And this isn't always just recreational drugs. Sometimes your heart medication, we did an investigation of two writers who saw a ghost at the same time in their bedroom up in the Hollywood Hills. And toward the end of the interview, which we separated them, they told sort of different stories all of a sudden. And at the end of the interview, we said, are you on any medications? And the guy said, yeah, I'm on heart medicine. We looked up the heart medicine. One of the known side effects is hallucinations. He didn't know that. But it could be important. Sleep experiences are responsible for a lot of these things. Uh, hypnagogic is on the way when you're falling asleep. Hypnopompic is when you're on your way from sleepfulness to awakeness. And the two worlds are mixed up. Your dream world and your real perceptions are mixed together. Your eyes can be open and you can be dreaming. You can be seeing things that are part of your dreams and not just a part of what your eyes should be looking at. Um, deprivation, like being in the desert for 40 days, maybe. Um, hungry, thirsty, solitude. Damn right you talk to the devil. <laughs> Whether he was there or not, I don't, I don't doubt it for a second. Mental illness, I mean, we sometimes joke about this, but uh, occasionally we get people calling us who are clearly mentally ill. I mean, they exhibit the symptoms, and for, of course, back then, mental illness was demon possession. They didn't know anything about schizophrenia or anything like that. So, these conditions relate directly to some of these claims. Uh, obviously, you have to rule that out. Projected thoughts. We've been getting a lot of um, uh, telepaths lately to come and project their thoughts to someone else. Um, we're not shy about asking about mental illness. Are you being treated? Have you been institutionalized? The first time I had to ask that question, I was a little bit worried. You know, thinking someone get up and you know, want to fight me or something, but. Just ask me, have you ever done time in a mental institution? I said, yeah. <laughs> just ask him, just wait. Um, sometimes these claims are extremely testable. If you're saying that you are having a conversation with the ghost of Adolf Hitler, we can test that. Depending on what who the person is you're talking to. If it's someone like that where you can actually do some research and find out presumably more than the person would know, but uh, still have that information accessible, then you can find that out. Um, sometimes when people, you know, old buildings get reputations for having those things, um, you could, you know, a lot of people make up stories about, you know, this guy died here, and, 1907 or something, if you could go find some information about the guy and the state of the place in 1907, have your claimant ask the ghost about that, the ghost would know what the conditions are. Um, it's, it's sort of testable. Okay, so, very similar to paranormal claims, and we know about paranormal claims, modern paranormal claims. <coughs> A lot of these have been extremely well explained, and we have possible explanations for the ones where we don't have that much information. 
I get people all the time coming up and say, I was driving along in the highway of New Mexico and this bright craft hovered over my car and shined a light in my face and then shot off at the speed of light. What do you say to that? I don't know. I, is that how you got it? Did you take a picture? What do you want me to say? Was it late at night? Had you been in the car for hours? You, you, you know, you're, you're practically hypnotized when you're driving overnight like that. So I can make some good guesses about it because of what we know from other cases. You can test a lot of these claims, even though they don't sound testable. You can test them. Most people don't want to be tested. No one has ever shown good evidence for a paranormal claim. Randy's had the million dollar prize for 15 years. We've had our prize for 10 years. There are people in Texas and Australia and all over the world who offer prizes. Not a single person has ever done one paranormal thing one time worldwide. It's a multi-billion dollar business and not one of them has ever proved it once. That pisses me off. <laughs> How does this claim live? That's the miracle. That is the miracle. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's because not all humans have been making the same stupid goddamn mistakes <laughs> for 2,000 years. We know a little bit more now. A little bit more now. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Turn it on. Uh, am, am I correct in thinking that you dealt with the Billy Meyer UFO people? Uh, one of my team members did, yeah. Yeah, we built, in fact, uh, yeah. Uh, we had, we're in contact with people. Billy Meyer is a one-armed Austrian who has been in touch with people from the Pleiades for four decades now, or five decades. That's the clan. And it's the lamest goddamn clan you've ever seen in your life. If you see these, I was on, I did a British a BBC TV show once, and they had a video of the, the Billy Meyer spaceship hovering around, uh, taking on an uh, eight millimeter uh, film. And I held an imaginary string above the TV set and that thing looked like it was on the, I mean, it's that lame, and there's still people who are out there. Even, oh, I will say this, even the UFO community, the, the MUFON people, the Mutual UFO Network, Billy Meyer's like, he's all those, they're not even buying it. So when you're only UFO people are saying, please, you know, uh, then you're in trouble now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I am a Christian, I'm a Catholic, and I appreciate what you have to say, but I have a question. Have you ever read any books about transubstantiation written by the Catholic Church? Um, no, i, I, I got to tell you, I haven't, because I, 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 there doesn't seem to be... So you're telling me that somewhere written in a book is evidence that would suggest that transubstantiation happens? Well, I, I'm not telling you anything. I'm just asking a question. No, I've read about it. I haven't read like full. Are there full books? Have you ever have you ever read in, anything at all by the Catholic Church? Concerned? Yeah, no, I've read, I've read about, and, and they're in some conflict about what is actually happening. So I, I don't think there's full agreement within the church about what's actually going on. Well, there is, but you have to research yourself. But I felt a little. Uh, sense of disrespect for Jesus himself and also for Christians. You know. Okay, well, I'll, I'll make no... I may be an intended. No, 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 I didn't. I, I, I'm talking about claims. I, I, I'm not talking about the people who believe these things because I sympathize with them. But the claims are...